All right, guys, welcome back to another Steam Free to Play walkthrough. Today we have Open World, the Open World game. I think that's what Open World game, the Open World game, something like that. Uh, it's supposed to be a satirical game that's supposed to take open worldness to its finest simplicity and make an awesome game out of it. Um, how do you like your head up display? I don't really know what that means, but let's say always on. Open world game, the open world game, that's what it is. And that's what we're going to call it, hopefully, from now on. Save one. I hear there's achievements in this game. I like achievements. Me like the achievements. Did you know every time you level up, you earn a skill point? I did not know that. Thank you, though. Did you know your journal keeps track of what you have and haven't read? I also did not know that. Hmm. Learning. Skill points can be sent, spent in the skill tabs of the pause menu. How do I start the game? This isn't really a loading screen, but it wouldn't be an open world game without waiting. Why? <laughs> okay, where'd the audio go? Is there audio in this game? There was at the start, right? Is it crashing? Oh no. My, uh, my mouse is doing the cogwheel thing. No! Open world game, the open world game's graphics are too advanced. Navigate on quests on the minimap. Okay. Hey, we're going. Hmm, something is not quite right. Yeah, I can't turn, dude. How do I turn? Whoa! <laughs> we're going inside of the game. Much better. You don't need to see all that anyways. True. Uh, w, D, S, W. Woo! Oh, we got XP. That's kind of cool. Ooh, skill points, that level up? Uh, speedrunner. This ability was obviously difficult to program and it is consequently easy to abuse. Complex ability, scene skip, gain the ability, I don't want to skip cutscene. Let's do this one. Complex ability. Woo! Alright, how do I exit this now? Stats, journal. What is all this? What is this? Okay, chapter one. I this this is a lot of reading. <laughs> Whoa, you're right. Okay, the tale of your epic adventure to save Oxuvia. I'm gonna read this all at the end. Okay, oh, that's a lot to read. What did I do there? Oh, this is kind of it's like a rhythm game without rhythm. Oh crap. Oh, oh, it changes. Something changed. Wow, we're leveling up so quick. Oh, wait, I saw it, dude. Oh, trying to go too fast. Whoa, cutscene. Let's go. Credits. What? Game design Zerk, Zach Bergeland, Rexford Broski. Creative direction, Redford Borowski, writing, Zach Berlin, Redford Borowski, blah, 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 editing, Dorothy Marie, Bar same people, they're all the same people, except for Dorothy Marie, she's a new one. Special thanks, word of mouth, indie games, Hyuk Chang, and to John Total Biscuit Bay. Possibly the most important credit is to my wife, Dorothy, Dorothy Marie, thank you for supporting me. But did we complete the, what? Ah, there's, one, there's a missing one though, so we still got stuff to do, boys. I need another SP before I do that. Resume. What's up here? Okay, now I can do my new skill point, right? This, oh, I gotta put points in the branch to do it. Okay. Ah, oh, but now I don't have any SP. Okay. Alright, game. <laughs> Lord almighty. Oh, my bad. I'm looking so forward to reading all this lore. I'm excited. If you cannot tell, there's a gecko. What's up, gecko, man? Golden Frog's entry. Why can I still not level this up? Oh, it costs SP as well. How do I use these abilities? What is Achievo? Ah, oh, achievements. Reforge. How... I'm so confused. 
Does it show my achievements and is there achievements in Steam for this game? I don't know. Oh, whatever. We'll figure it out eventually. What's up, question mark? Acquired, retired boss entry. Is this a wall? No, this is Sky Arch. What's this thing down here? Oh, it's a save thing or something? Alleyway feather entry. Man, this is gonna be a ton of reading, my dude. That'll be alright. But yeah, this looks like all the play in the game. I like the music for this area. Do do do. I need a radar for these things though. What if I like miss one and I have to like scour the map for it? Ah, that's nice. Kinda. Whatever that was, that was kind of cool. Oh crap. Lizard. Oh, we leveled up again. Alright, let's use our abilities. Alright, let's see if this actually makes me move faster. We're at 5% of the game, apparently. Am I faster? I kind of look faster, right? Fire trope 5. Ah, oh, crap. Fishy. Oh, this is actually a mini game. Huh. Oh, I suck. Come back here, Fishy. This actually has different gameplay styles. I didn't see that coming. That's kind of cool. Caught him. What's up? Don't you run for me, Mr. Fish. Got him. I am not very good at swimming, apparently. Oh, that is a tough fish, buddy. Oh. God, he's hollered. Okay. Yay! That was a difficult fish right there. Up. Uh, yay! Jub Jub entry. I like that name. I used to have a Jub Jub in Neopets. He's probably dead. To be honest with you, that man is probably dead. Let's finish this area before we go on to the next. Should have probably done that for the starting area too, making sure that I cleared the whole area before progressing so I made sure I didn't miss anything. But I'm dumb, so, you know. Swift repair entry. I'll come back, baby. Well, this is a speedy boy. Oh my god. Got him. Trash entry. The good old trash. Acquired trope number two. Oh, that one just got right on my hook. That was really nice of him. Come here, dude. Anchovy entry. They spelled anchovy wrong. Ocean feather entry. I don't really have much to say about this game except for reading the entries. <laughs> the fish, I didn't expect there to be a different place now. That's kind of cool, I guess, but uh, If you have time to waste, I guess this is a nice little grind game It's pretty uh, engaging, I guess, for what it is Maybe worth one playthrough I don't know if it's worth more than that, but one playthrough is not asking too much. It seems kind of nice It's relaxing the fish aren't too relaxing. They're actually kind of difficult, but you know, everything else. Oh, what is this thing? It's humming at me. Oh, is this the end? Oh, we found the end of the stage. Why are these things humming at me, dude? Oh. Is there like a top down thing we can do? Oh, 
Oh, that thing's supposed to be a top-down thing. I guess. Another beacon. Yay. Yeah, I'm still missing things. Let's go get that question mark up there. Oops. Soleil 2 entry. I hope this lore is pretty good. Something like it's gonna be painful reading all of it if it's not good. An L entry. Why are these hearts different names? Am I a player? Why is this fish out in the middle of the street? Questionable. It's a pond guardian. Oh, we're at 13% now. That's good. We're doing it. Let's use our skill points, I guess. What does this do? I don't know what this means. I don't know what any of this means. Okay, whatever. Uh, resume. Do, 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 do. What's up, man? Found another trope. Thug Trouble 3 entry. I know I'm gonna miss some. I'm gonna be really upset when I'm like scouring the lands to find it. Dark Long Crystal. The Dark Crystal! Is there a map somewhere? That might be worth looking into. K button for map. Journal. There's so many I haven't read. What do these question marks mean? I haven't got any of the achievements, I don't believe. Save, just in case something bad happens. <laughs> All right, let's continue, I guess. Oh, this will help. All right, seems like we just need to go to the left from here. The Queen's Mask. Give me that. Hmm. Alrighty. Well, we're at level 20. That's good, I guess. Something. Now, I guess I need to go down. Man, I'm gonna be traversing this game forever. The legendary Issa Katana is ready to be reforged. Reforged. Do I have to do anything to reforge something? That's a good question. I feel like I need to start getting this stuff. I 
Okay. Zoom. Ah, oh, there's an actual cave wall. That's kind of cool. I like that. It's neat. Ah, the music changed. Nice. End game reward. Seven. Mimic entry. I feel like a map would be kind of nice though, just to see everything I cleared. Oh crap. Boo doo boo, boo doo boo, boo ba doo ba doo ba doo. And game reward too. Doo 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 doo, doo 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 doo. I wish I could play Legends of the music while playing this. Even though the music in games, I it's not constant enough. Like there was a long pause between that bomb and the other bombs. Ice Strikes entry. And I really just like Legend of Zelda music. Especially Ocarina of Time. Pretty much, well, I like the other ones too, but Ocarina of Time is my favorite. And really the only game I spent a good amount of time on, to be honest with you. These caves are very huge. These caves are massive! Super immersive! What's over here? Ah, oh, we're in a new place. The Lydium Caves Abandoned Facility. We're going in deeper, boys. Other in a jar entry. Huh. Hmm. Blue glowing crystal stuff. I know I'm just reading the stuff, but <laughs> one, I read out loud anyways, and two, uh, there's not really the most in the world going on right now. Moon face mask entry. Whoop. We leveled up again. Yay. Which means I can do this, and I can... Ah, oh, that's nice. Can I actually do that? I like picking up with merchants. Let's see, I'm gonna hit the left shift button and it does nothing. I've been debated. Okay. Interesting, interesting. You lied to me. Is there a map, maybe? Now I keep asking, but I, I need it. Oh well, whatever. Ah! Oh, no. Ah, oh, this does tell me if I've gotten all the things. Awesome, that is what we needed. Thank you, game. Oh, what a hero. <laughs> what a hero. This could have been a very long playthrough if I did not have that. That's nice. The infinite waste, this slows me down quite a bit. Oh, everything's important. Oh my god, that's such a useless ability. Look, I can make it yellow. <laughs> that's funny. All oh, these abilities are so useless. Oh crap, my bad. I'm leveling up expediently. Very quick. Wow. Much amazed. Oh, there's a big question mark. Is that the end? Did we find the ending? The ultimate ending? Achievement unlocked. Chapter 10 entry. We found the end. And we got an achievement. Nice. I wonder what's up with my Steam, Steam achievements. It doesn't tell me when, like, I have a... Um... Like a Steam achievement, if there are Steam achievements in this game, I don't know if it's a built-in achievement system or a Steam achievement system. Um,
Oh, well, that's super nice. Okay. So we got fast travel soon coming, and then something that will point me in the right direction. That's really nice, actually. Magic orb. This area is just a big amorphous blue area. So blue. The blue power is overwhelming. Let's get this thing. Oh, I can't. Why can't I get it? I need more branch points. Boom. Now I can get it once I get enough money. Give me more levels or money, whatever, whatever I need to get that. Give it to me. Oh, nice fish. He just went right on my hook. What a good guy. The homie. Sandfish. Wow, that's a rare fish. Wow. Give me that mask. Ticky mask. I feel like I'm getting more SP per level now. That's kind of nice. Mama Mamba. Oh, my bad. Select a challenge type in the stats menu. Oh, I know. Tell me where it is. Okay, interesting. Oh, I can only do one at a time. Oh, nice. That's actually super useful. So basically, you get the completion of this thing and you've broken the game. It's kind of dope. Because now I can look up whatever type of thing I'm, I need in this area to succeed. Yoink. Don't know how the fast travel thing works though. But we got it! Hey! You already know. I go to like stats region and I click a place to fast travel. Oh, anywhere I've already been. Dope. That's neat. I like that. I can dig it. Achievement unlocked. Might not be the fastest way to do it, but I think question marks are the most plentiful thing in this game. So. Because once I get all the question marks, I'll probably have to swoop back around to get other things I missed, but. Gotta do what you gotta do. Oops. Another one. We're 
becoming a master. We've leveled up so far, so fast. Excuse me. Beacons all around this thing, dude. Okay. Nice. I don't see anything around here. Increases movement speed, that's good. I guess completionists and speedrunners seem the best to me. I don't know what this does. All right, let's look at the waste in the area. The waste, we're missing five. All right, challenges. Are there any in this area? It does not look like it. Oh, we're getting lucky now. Yeah, there was one down here I thought I saw. Maybe not. Oh no, that does not look like it's in the same area where I'm at. I think I got all those in this area. There we go. There's one. Speedy boy. We're at 42%. That's pretty good, I think. I don't know if, how we're doing compared to other people. Uh, we got all the magic orbs. So now... Let's see. What about you? Have we got all of you? Because there's one up to the top right. I don't know if that's in this area or in the next area. Next area, it would seem. What about that? Am I missing one of these? No, that's outside the rim too, I'm pretty sure. Uh... Missing one, and I don't know where it's at. Just been faster running around to see if I could find it. To be honest. Missing like one thing, right? Let me check. 
Yeah, I'm, no way do I have, no, I'm missing literally one thing, huh. A sword, the only sword in the area. Okay, cool. I guess. All right. Let's go back to the question mark. Lord Almighty. <laughs> only sword in the area, huh? Excuse me, I didn't go south yet. Lord, that sword took me forever to find, my gosh. Maybe there's a better way to do it, I just don't know it. Have I been this way? I think I have actually, I think I've already been this way. Yeah, I think I have, okay. Okay, let's keep going to the question mark then. Come back if we need to. Speedy boy. How far are we into the Lydium Caves? Stats, regions. Lydium Caves. We got 18 more things to go. Bonus XP entry. Nice. Lake of Fire. Oh crap. Oh you jerk. Oh what a jerk, I had him. Yeah. Ding a sea fish. Ooh, this one's a speedy boy. Not speedy enough, though. Alright. Lakes of Fire. Whew. Oh, we leveled up again. Let's get some speed boost up in here. Press space to roll. Wonder how good that is. Probably useless, but we got it. Hey, something. Yeah, I think the best thing to leave your thing on is the question marks because I do believe they are like the most guiding thing in the game. I mean, you're gonna miss some things because some things are obviously not exactly on the question marks, but it'll lead you to most of the stuff you're trying to find. You're missing one of those in-game reward ones. Oh, well, oh, I can get my roll key now. Let's see. It doesn't do anything. Roll, sucker. Oh, it makes me, it's slow. What? Why would I want to do that? <laughs> okay, interesting. Okay, wait a second. I haven't got everything in here yet, have I? Let me check. Stats. Nope, missing four things. Let's see. Well, I know I'm missing uh, looking for challenges. This right, huh? Because I didn't get them all. Hopefully the other things are with it. To make my life easier. There's something.
Hey, the legendary cover art weapon too is ready to be reforged. How do I reforge things? Like, what do I need to do to do that? Okay, what else are we missing in here? so many things. How do you scroll through this like quickly? Expeditiously? Because my mouse does not scroll that quickly. I guess I could do this and then open them as I need them. There's something on the thing that tells me what it's supposed to be. That'd be really nice. Regions. What am I missing? No, it doesn't tell you. Skills. Stats. Uh, this is actually kind of hard to navigate. If I get these, I should. I know we're back at Sky Arch, but. It's better to make some progress and then head back because if I clear this out, it shouldn't react to it anymore. Um. Should react to whatever's in there, hopefully. Alright, how many more things do we have in the Sky Arch area? Okay, so we completed Sky Arch. So if anything points to the left, it's in the freaking thing. So, this is how we're gonna do this. The only problem. Mm, whatever. Okay. We'll just do the other areas first. We'll come back to this area. Because once I remove all the other things, it can't be leading me to them if they're not there. I don't believe, unless there's like something really wacky going on that sucks. Because this is whole. Unless there's like maybe more caves that I haven't seen yet. Who knows? Ah, so the generalist thing. Okay, that's kind of cool. Makes it where there's. Oh. Makes it easier to do this stuff. Nice. So yeah, my tips are, a uh, good tip is if you're stuck on like one item in the area, you should probably just clear the rest of them because you do have a tracker. So as long as you clear the other ones, like, you shouldn't be getting led to the wrong place. I don't know why I was so fixated on it. I, it's just when you're missing one item, it's so frustrating. That was dumb on my part. Looking back. really what I need to have focus on right now is the bot thing. Skills.
He thought he had to play. Wrong. Maybe back in the day before I was upgrading like everything. Might have been okay, but nope. <laughs> All right. Now I can get the last upgrade, I believe. Yay, everything's maxed. Nice. I can still roll, which is kind of useless, but you know. Oh, I just hit one key now? Well, that kind of takes out all the playability of this game. All the gameplay's gone now. Hmm, interesting. Well, I guess it's faster. I actually prefer this to open world games to be honest with you because I'm like actual open world games because I just get so overwhelmed with all the stuff to do this is actually nice because I can actually feasibly complete all the things without spending hours and hours on end and days and days on end like I bought the Witcher and I literally have not played it like I bought the like uh, wild hunt version or whatever it's called the expansion thing that was supposed to be super good, but I, was, I played it for like an hour, maybe more, maybe like two or three hours, but I got like so overwhelmed with all the stuff to do. I, and I like having some kind of like good direction on where to go. I don't like having the freedom of choosing whatever, at least in this I know I'm grabbing everything. And other open world games you have so many decisions and it takes so much time to do each one that it's hard to decide for me anyways pretty indecisive on things like that struggle Master Fisher now, boys. Can't wait to read all these though. I'm sure it's pretty entertaining. I hope. I hope. For my sake. <laughs> Sixty nine percent, maybe. Deal with even more bandits entry. There's nothing out here. Not much out here anyways, if there was anything. I 
Can't wait to see what item I was missing in that cave that... Because I'm pretty sure I searched all of them. It just, like, every one seemed like they were leading me outside the cave, which was super lame, actually. But I guess we'll see. Eventually. I will not be denied! Ah, new music. Dope. And I do have fast travel. I haven't used it yet because I've been too busy picking up stuff. But when I get done with picking up all the question marks, I can fast travel everywhere else. So that's nice, I guess. Oh, we're going to get an achievement soon for being level 100 and something. Yay. Max level, yay! I guess. Pretty much had all the skills for a while now, so. Whatever. Whatever! fully completed one two areas right now I believe which is a sky arch and then the waste the never-ending waste or whatever those were called this is a really empty spot right here geez Bahamut See what we're looking at progress wise stats almost got all the question marks and then well we're getting pretty close to getting done well it does say 80 percent but it's nicer looking at how many actual numbers i need actual numbers real numbers baby not none of them percentiles give me them real numbers Speedy boy. Seems like we're going back to the very beginning. Oh, what's up over here? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oops. Oops. I think I'll just go by whatever number I'm missing the most to hunt down all this stuff. I think that's the best way to do it. Probably. I don't think I'm beating this. Oh, people said it takes an hour. I guess I'm a little bit behind schedule. This is helper text achievement unlocked. Nice. Whatever that means. An hour to beat the game. Eight hours to read all the text. Let's go. Do. 
Boop, 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 boop. I guess if I cut out the time that I was just wandering the caverns, not doing anything, then I'll probably be at about an hour. Just I spent so much time trying to find that one thing instead of moving on, because I'm a dingus. Ding dong a day. Question mark master. That's what this achievement should be called. The question mark god. Alright, do we get all of them? Let's look at our Chivos. We're missing a few. Read every journal entry. Well, we'll get that one for sure. Alright, we've done eyeballs. We haven't done the fish. What are we missing the most of? Hearts, it seems. Or sword, actually. Uh, something like that. That'll work. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'd be the little thigh thing. That sounds like a friendly animal. We got all the fishes in this area, I believe, unless I'm missing something. Doesn't even have a- oh, yeah, it's up here. Okay. Fishy. Come here, bud. Saw something. There he is. Oh, my bad. Do, do, do. Get my fishing numbers way up, baby. The easy feather entry. Well, I know what I need to get next to this area, at least, is a thing so I can pick up the weapon. But. Since I'm almost done with the fishing, let me see stats. Yeah, I just need one more fish. I might as well go get it. This it seems pretty close. Maybe not. Debated. I should have thought it wasn't close because I'm already in the sky arch and I've already gotten everything. But I'm a ding dong, you know. I could just fast travel, but I'm dumb. It's all good. I gotta be getting close to that sucker. I saw something. Want it. Yeah, the slime room. The easiest mobs in the game to kill. Give me that. Fishy, fishy. The last fish. The most rare fish. The sword fin entry. Alright, what haven't we done yet? Stats. Uh, let's go get this wherever it is. Where's my. Oh my god, it's probably in that area that I didn't. couldn't find it in. Fast travel. Lidrium. Bet it's in here somewhere, I bet. It's a one. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm debating myself into believing. I just want to believe. I don't think I found one watchtower in this whole thing, so I really doubt it's actually in here, but you never know. Never know until you check. Yeah, it seems like it's super south. Like, I don't even know how to get that far south. Maybe it's not in here. Let me check something. Stats, fast travel. Aragonia, there, sure. Yeah, it's probably actually over here. God, I got so excited. I was like, I found out what was in the cave. I found it. Yes. Oh, yes. But it wasn't. I don't believe. We'll see. Maybe I'm debating myself into thinking it's outside the cave. Oh, yes. Now I'm getting closer to it. God. All right. Yeah, what are we missing? Heart. Heart is that way, so it's not the heart for sure. 
I haven't tried that one. I know it's not that one, because I've already gotten those for that area. There's something missing. Something is amiss. Is it that? Could it be a feather? No. But it, it actually could be a feather, but... Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just go get these things. <laughs> we'll find it eventually. It's gonna be the last thing I find and we'll be so shocked when I figure out what it is. 100% shock, boy. Moon and Stump Mask entry. Sounds like a cool entry. Is this thing all the way in the desert? Jesus. Must be only like one of those left. We got all the fish, so I can stay mostly away from the water now. Oh my god, he is so far. But we found another mask, the Skull Mask entry. Nice. Red glowing crystal. Legendary stick is ready to be forged. The stick of destiny. I really used to like the stick weapon in Zelda. The only thing I really hated about it was when it broke. I liked it though. I thought it was cool. Having that big old long stick and thwacking people with it. Get out of here. I got a stick and I'm ready to use it. Okay, we got all those now. What's next? We can do the feathers. Sure. Why not? Feather me up. I am so excited for the story time, you cannot even believe it. Should have done those, to be honest with you, but... That's whatever, I'm committed now. I'm sure there's a fastest, like, optimal way to do this, but I'm not an optimal person. Or a fast person. I'm a slow, unoptimized, high speed, or low speed, high drag type of person. <laughs> oh, lord. 96%. Ooh! I've only used the fast travel twice and it did not really help me, to be honest with you. Where is it leading me? It better not be back to the desert. Because <laughs> I was already there. Why would you do this to me? Where is this feather at? Oh my gosh, on the ends of the earth. We swimming. Like an otter. Well, it's right outside the desert place. But there is another feather in the desert place. Golly. Jeepers, Andy. Got all the feathers now. Stats. Might as well do that because I know it's here. Somewhere in this desolate place. Was it a heart that was missing from the cave? Interesting. Very interesting. Aragonia. What a weird name. The legendary Guggenir. <laughs> I like that name. The Guggenir. What am I looking for here? Is there nothing in here? Yeah, there has to be, because I didn't, I know I didn't get them all. Oh, it's over here. The legendary Gugnir. Roll. I'm so disappointed in the roll ability. <laughs> it is so bad. Let's see, we've already made a stick. How can we up do that in this area? 
Up to. Oh. Legendary Avalan. I wonder what that is. Sounds like a name. It was a heart the whole time. Who would have thought? Huh. Interesting. Give me the Skugner. Give it to me. And eat it. It's up to the northeast. Fast travel. Uh, this journal. Let's just see where we're missing something because obviously not much missing here. Uh, Exia. There's stuff in Exia still. Why am I leaving Exia? Yeah, let's go back there. Oh, uh, we're still missing one thing. I guess that's an Aragonia. Whatever's up here. Okay, it looks far though. This does not look like Aragonia to me. But, you know, I could be wrong. What is up here? Was there another sword in here I thought I already picked up? Maybe that's... I don't know. Because it looks like it's in the top left. Hmm. Confused. Wow, what if there was a sword in there the whole time? It wasn't a heart, it was a sword. That's crazy. I could swore I picked up the sword though. Well, I guess I was wrong. Looks like Mama's wrong again. Oh, I had to, wow. The stick was made in the desert, but it's, oh my God, that is a debate, that is awful. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm actually kind of upset about that. That's really fucked up, actually. That was really fucked up. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. That was not nice. Hmm. That was a real dick move game. How are you gonna have the things that make the stick in the desert? What? Huh. Huh. That stick better have an immersive, ba uh, a huge backstory that tells why that thing's in the stupid caves instead of where it was found at. Lol. That's challenges. Not missing any more swords. Everything is in the desert though, so I'm at the end. Three more things to get. Oh, I so said everything was, oh, this was, oh, okay. Interesting. Let's highlight the important things. <laughs> Important things. Ninety nine percent. We'll never get the one percent. All right, we need the last thing the heart. Uh, heart. Right over here. Achievement and skin unlocked. Whoa, now I'm blue. <laughs> okay. Well, we did all that stuff. Now, all we have to do left is read. Y'all ready for this? If you're just coming to watch the gameplay, I don't know what that is. I guess let's get all the achievements. The gameplay is going in here. Now we read everything. Main quest, chapter one. 
You arrived at the promised meeting place, the cave by the sideways tree northeast of Prefator. You guessed the tree was kind of sideways. No one was there, so you were unsure if this was the right cave, but you were promised answers to how you arrived in this nightmare of a world. You kicked around outside of the cave for half an hour before deciding that the tree was more diagonal and began to leave when there was a rustling close by in a bush. You glance over to see the eyes of a frightened child gazing suspiciously at you. You gave a gentle beckoning motion and he skittered out to you. The man you were supposed to meet had been taken captive in Leodum. Before you left, the child muttered something about it being dangerous to glow alone and gave you a weapon from the cover art of the game. Kind of looks like a compass. It's dangerous to glow alone. Here, take this. You traveled. Chapter 2. You traveled to Leodome and were suddenly arrested. Also in custody was a man painted with a stone and wearing a decorative claw, the man you've been searching for. You were brought, both brought to the chopping block outside of Leodome to be executed. With no escape in sight, you lay your head down and accepted death. Just then, the mighty roar of a dragon pierced the heavens and sent everyone into a state of panic. As the dragon laid waste to the land, you and the man painted with so stone made your escape. Protected from the fires and the flames by your plot armor, you and your companion reached safety. The clawed man thanked you for saving him and reintroduced himself as Gesh. You made yourself a sandwich while he told you all about the world. Exuvia, the world without a home. The world Exuvia is full of this, the unfinished, but Gesh and his companions hope to bring change to the world. If you want to know more, you need to return to the starting cave, which is actually the secret hideout for Gesh's society, the Restorers. Chapter 3. Waiting for you at the cave by the angle tree was a woman named Sele. Somehow she was expecting you and she guided you into the Restorers hideout, the Rising Sands. Gesh was there and he introduced you to the rest of the Restorers. He then told you about the great mist dragon that has been terrorizing the land. He wanted you to find out more about the dragon and directed you to travel to Absinthe to be beseech the ancient historian with for information. You were free to go wherever you wanted, but to travel to Absinthe and meet with the ancient historian, you must return to the rising suns and set out with Huroth the halfling. Chapter 4. You travel to Absinthe with your fellow restorer, <laughs> restorer, Hiroth. On the way, you, he told you about how Gesh first convinced him to join the restorers. He also confessed that this was his first time outside of Aragonia, which made you puzzled why Gesh picked him to your, be your guide. Inside the town of Absinthe, you found the ancient historian, a humble looking dwarf, sitting in stupor outside a out, local inn. As you went to speak to her, a group of out-of-practice assassins surround you. After dispatching the mysterious assassins, you and Hiroth speak to the ancient historian. She introduced herself as Varys and promised to tell you all you wanted to know if you were, would put her up at the end for the night. After paying for room and board, you sat down to dinner and asked about the mist dragon. Varys told you about the dragon is most likely Vothgar, the oldest being of Exuvia. A great dragon is the only one of many forms of Vothgar has been depicted as over the thousand over the years, but the most common. In the morning, Roth convinced Varese to travel back to the Rising Sands, but you must travel as well eventually. Chapter 5 You arrive back at the Rising Sands along with Roth, excuse me, Roth and Varese, only to find the hideout ca empty and in shambles. You found an injured elf hiding in the shadows. It was one of the restorers you met before, Ryuya. -E. Freeze cast healing magic on the elf, and she sprung right up and explained what happened. A group of spotty assassins that looked like the ones that had attacked you in Absinthe attacked the hideout. Gash and the others escaped through a secret tunnel in the back that led leads to the city of Skyarch. Ryuya -E got hit in the leg with an arrow during the attack and was unable to make it to the tunnel before they had to seal it off. She had been hiding ever since, waiting for you. Ryuei has a sky arching device that she can use to contact Gash, and she'll wait for your return to the Rising Sands when you are ready to find him. Chapter 6. Oh my god. You had Ryuei contact Gash, who immediately answered. Though the static of the connection, you 
could hear a very stressed Gesh tell you that their arrival in Skyarch did not go as planned. He urged you to head to the Pin Tower to meet as soon as possible. You, Hroth, Varese, and Ryue travel to the Sky Arch. To tar try and get directions to the Pin Tower, you looked all looked very out of place in Sky Arch. You also struggled to find a person who you could ask directions from as everyone just tried to sell you something. Every, eventually, someone offered to show you the way to Pin Tower, but led you into an ambush by some thugs with stun batons that quickly overpowered you. You woke up to find yourself in a small prison cell, prison with six cells. In the cells were the other restorers, Hroth, Varese, Ryue, and Sl Slay. The last cell was occupied by a mysterious hooded figure. Sele loudly whispered from the cell next to you that Gesh was on his way. Soon after, Gesh himself appeared at the bottom of the stairs to free you. As you made your way out of the cell, the hooded figure reached out through the bars and grabbed you. Don't trust him, he hissed in your ear. Gesh came to your aid, striking the hooded figure back, and you both left him behind. Safe outside, the restorers decided to split up and return to the most likely safe against again most likely safe again rising sands oh we're being betrayed chapter seven you met up with the restorers back at the usual hideout and find out that the time spent sky arch wasn't entirely a waste Gash tracked down the headquarters of the assassins that had been plaguing you and soleil spent some time spying on their organization the group is actually a cult look called the Vroth vothians who worship Vothgar and are trying to restore it to its full power. She also heard some vague information about a magic ring somewhere near the tranquil vacation town, Lake of Fire, that has something to do with Vothgar. Gash decided that the restorers must be the first to get this magic ring and sent everyone to the Lake of Fire. Once there, you met up with an old friend of Slay, a fire elf named Enol. Anal. The Lake of Fire is somewhat infamous for its thriving a community of artisans and produce many peculiar magic items, magic rings. And Enel has one of the largest collections in town. He showed you one particularly excessive ring that looked like a loop of diamond scales and explained that while the potential magic inside was vast, no one yet could determine the purpose of its magic. It sounded like the kind of ring you were after. So you preside, persuade Anel to join up with the restorers. You all took the ring and begin to journey to the Rising Sands. Chapter 8. You found the restorers back at the Rising Sands, waiting for Gesh to return so they could tell him about the ring. In the meantime, they had captured a mysterious hooded figure who was snooping around the fallen tree that marks the entrance and had him tied up in the corner. It was the same hooded figure you left... Locked in a cell back in Sky Arch, his fortunes not improved. The man begged to speak to you and told you his name was Hanthamen of the Beastmen from the Infinite Waste. You call him Tham. He came to warn you about Gesh, who had visited the Vothian headquarters many times and has probably been one of them all along. You initially scoffed at the notion, but then Saleh ran to, in to tell you that Gesh had been spotted leading an army of Vothians back with him. You confronted Gash and he revealed that Vothgar is actually long dead, but his power can still be harnessed. The ring in your possession is called the Dragon's Eye and is one of the Vothian artifacts that can be used to get there. And Vothgar's artifacts are the stone scales and the Mist Bear's Claw, which Gash has been wearing the entire time. He demanded the dragon's eye so he could, that he could ascend to the great ruler of Xuvia that he was always destined to be. You try in vain to resist him, but you were struck down and lost the ring. As your consciousness faded, consciousness faded, a blinding flash of light continued the battlefield, and you felt yourself being lit, uh, lifted up, hopefully being carried back to the rising sands. Chapter 9 you awoke to find yourself surrounded by the other restorers who are ex all ecstatic to see you awake. It was Tham who was blinded, who blinded the Vothians with a common beastman weapon and aided you in escape. Gesh apparently had no time to waste and set off west and with his army to the shrine of Vothgar. Battered and tired, you still managed to rouse the others to race after Gesh and stop his sinister plot. Hroth, Ryue, Sele, Varese, Enel, and Hanthamen all join your 
surprise counterattack against the Vothians. Amidst the chaos of the battle you filled, you make out Gesh running back into the shrine and you chase after him. You could not stop him as it will, he made it to the inner sanctum where the shrine gives way to the the deep void of mist. In that moment, when all seemed lost, a large dragon roar shook the earth, air, and your very bones. A, gig a gigantic dragon appeared out of the mist, roaring again and knocking everyone off their feet. In one large bite, the dragon ate Gash and he was gone. The Vothians soon retreated, and the Restorer stood victorious, filled with excitement, shock, and abounding commodity. We didn't do crap. You decide that the next step is simply to go out and explore Exuvia, trying to make the world a better place with a world full of discoveries ahead of them. Everyone returns to, no doubt, the Rising Sands. That feels awful. Like, I didn't do anything except give the guy the ring, and then he got ate by a dragon. You receive a letter from Haunt the Men with directions to meet him in the Infinite Waste. Reunited, he greets you warmly and tells you that there is someone waiting to meet you. You travel together to the shrine near the mist that bears the telltale architecture of Varthgar Shrine. At the edge of the mist, Tham calls out to the void and is answered back by a large roar, loud roar. The same gigantic dragon that ate Gash on that faithful day swoops out of the mist and then shapeshifts down to the size of a man. He is wearing the three artifacts of Vothgar, and his skin is like ornate scale armor. He introduces himself as Vothgar. Apparently, he has been watching over you for some time and thanks you for returning his artifacts, even though if he was really watching, he'd know you didn't do much. <laughs> True. There is a great war amongst the dragons happening inside the mist, and these powerful artifacts are helping him once again gain control over the world of dragons. Vothgar says he sees a lot of himself in you and is glad that you two could finally meet. He will continue to watch after you and takes joy and takes joy in your success. For now, though, he could, must return to the mist. The realm of dragons is in chaos, and without his guidance, the chaos could split, spill into the already struggling land of Exuvia. With words of encouragement, Vothgar morphs back into a mighty dragon form and takes to the sky before gliding back into the mist. Amazed at your newfound friend, you continue your travels in Exuvia. That was really cool. Um, Again, I didn't really do much, but I guess it was a it was an entertaining story. Side quest: a tale of your many task journeys and everything in between across Exuvia. This is gonna be a lot of reading, boys. Okay. All right, boys, let's do this. A quick grind. An old, weathered-looking man told you he'd give you his most prized possession if you brought him a hundred maple syrups from hunting. Walking green mushrooms. You were pretty sure the syrups had about a 0.013% drop rate, but still put in the work and brought him the syrups. He gave you a glowing scroll that you had no idea how to use. Can I use the down key? I actually have to click each one. Oh my god. You found someone who wouldn't stop asking if you had a spear row. When you told them you didn't understand what they meant, they only repeated the question. Maybe it's a bit far-fetched, but perhaps you'll run into whatever a spear row is later and it can help this person out. Abandoned outpost. You found an abandoned outpost with plenty of loot for the taking. Acrophobia. You met an elf with a fear of heights, which really sucks considering they live in tree houses. They refused to make a house on the ground, so you helped ease their fear a bit by making a comfortable platform to land on if they ever fell. Plus five house building. Ancient manuscripts. As a noble requested, you find some ancient manuscripts. You found the manuscripts and brought them back, only to realize that it's in a language you both can't read. You were rewarded with some gold and a laugh. Assassin's one. You went to help a traveler on the side of the road, only for them to show their true identity as an assassin and attempt to kill you. They were easily distracted and dispatched. You were rewarded with some bandanas. Assassin's two. You saved a traveler who was being attacked by assassin, an assassin. You were rewarded with some gold. Assassins 3. You were ambushed by assassins but managed to defeat them unscathed. They weren't the best assassins. You were rewarded with a curved blade. Assassin training. You saw bright colored marks on the side of the wall that you'd easily be able to grab. You swiftly climbed the wall to be rewarded with a nice view. At a loss, there's something fishy going on here. <laughs> okay. Some scientists, oh, bad experiment. Some scientists bit off more than they could chew and nearly caused a multiple block size explosion. Luckily, they weren't that bright and don't know how to turn the power back on. You were rewarded with not dying with 
in an explosion beastman trap quest the beastman's re reputable quests improve your reputation with their tribe you repeated it every day until you maxed your reputation with them you were rewarded with a legendary trade mount nice beehive estate you found a mansion that looked like it had been taken over by bandits with a closer look you found them taking care of bees and enjoying some nice honey you decided to leave them be ha leave them be ha okay blacksmith apprentice a young blacksmith thinks that he has what it takes to take over the shop so his master can retire you talk to the master blacksmith who told you that the apprentice time had not yet come you came back to the apprentice and tell him that perhaps patience was the lesson he had yet to learn. You were rewarded with a good pair of greaves. Bomb shop. You found a doorway barred by rocks with some bombs laid out in front of it. You managed to light the bombs and open the entryway only to realize it was a bomb shop. By some miracle, you didn't blow the whole place up. You were rewarded with a bigger bomb bag. Bonus XP. There was a bigger monster off to the side of the trail that was obviously there as an extra challenge to boost XP. You took care of the monster, rewarded with some XP. Book collector. An excited woman requested you find a rare manuscript to add to her collection. You found the book and gave it to her in return for some coins and XP. Boredom. You brought some much needed entertainment in the form of board games to some guards. You were rewarded with some XP. Bounty won. A bounty board in the Beastman Village is in the infinite waste was paying to a hunt a dangerous walking tomato. You found it and defeated it. Even though it put up a surprising fight, you were rewarded with a large sum of beastman coins for completing the bounty. Bounty two, you accepted a bounty to hunt a rampaging giant turtle that, that's been destroying village across the waste. You found it outside discarded village and defeated it before it lay foot inside. You were rewarded with a large sum of Beastman coins for completing the bounty. Bounty 3. You accepted a bounty to hunt a necromancer. You found the necromancer's lair and defeated them and all their followers. You were rewarded with a large sum of Beastman coins for completing their bounty. Bounty 4. You accepted a bounty to hunt a monstrous sand insect. You fought it and defeated it. You were rewarded with a huge amount of Beastman coins for completing the bounty. Bounty 5. You accepted the most extreme bounty available, hunting the King of Worms. After five hours of grueling combat, you defeated the King. You were rewarded with a gigantic sum of Beastman coin, as well as a badge for completing the most difficult bounty. Box Cleanup. You helped clean up empty boxes in an excessively flashy minigame. You were rewarded with XP and plus one to style. Bridge Master, an annoying soldier on a bridge, kept stabbing the floor and yelling something about you not being able to pass. You weren't sure what to do about it until a traveler walked right by them with no problem. You did the same. You were rewarded with falling into the water as the bridge broke. <laughs> okay. Broken Wheel. You found a band of travelers on the side tending to a wagon with a broken wheel lucky for them you're a master of all trades and repaired the wheel you were rewarded with some potatoes bridge troll some ruffians wouldn't let you pass without paying a fee they all a oh, pitch bridge toll they obviously were causing others trouble as well so you taught them a lesson you were rewarded with free passage Cliff hopping. You spent an hour trying to hop up the side of the mountain just to find out the top was blocked off by an invisible barrier. I know that. You were rewarded with the big set. I feel that. I can relate to that one. Cloud News Radio. You helped a duo under the alias of two dogs get their radio station back up and running. You were rewarded with some good jams. Coffee. In an intense cutscene, you drank the best cup of coffee and to the best of your abilities. You were rewarded with the energy, joy, and the XP. Crafting competition. You joined a competition to craft the greatest sand fishing pole. You won by quite a margin and were rewarded with a fancy hat. Dailies. An important looking person told you they'd give you a quest every day and you'd be rewarded in incremental but valuable and unique loot. Day off. Everyone needs a break now and then. You relax at the pool all day. Good on you. Deal with the bandits. Some bandits have been robbing people near Prefator. You took care of them. You were rewarded with the spoils and a feeling of more ambiguity. Deal with the other bandits. More bandits have been causing trouble near Noble Lake. You dealt with them and were rewarded with a tasty fish dinner. Deal with even more bandits. Apparently bandits haven't come to fear you very much as some have been causing trouble outside Leodum. You swiftly took care of them and were rewarded with some Aragonian coins. 
there was even more bandits. With this many bandits tribes on the loose, their population rivals even Metropolis Skyarch. Oh no, have you become a genocidal maniac? You dealt with the bandits and were rewarded with equal measures, guilt and existential dread. Decision making. You found an, a lone traveler observed, absorbed and thought at a crossroad with four directions. They told you they were in a pickle. They didn't know what, which was the right direction. When you asked them what they were looking for, they said they weren't sure and needed to use their head and think. They offered you a toast and dozed off after mumbling something about it being the only nice thing to do after a toast. Dejected soldier. You found a soldier at her post. From the lack of work her fellow soldiers do, they apparently abandoned their post and ignore threats, so it's no wonder there are so many bandits about. You didn't have much to offer, but you did say you'd step any soldiers into line that you ran into. You were rewarded with some XP. Dodging aggro, you saw a huge robot monster that you were far too annoyed by to trifle with. Despite your best efforts, you could not get by without a fight. You begrudgingly dealt with it and moved on with rewarded with some some of with more of the same boring loot. Duke Mighty, the undefeated God King. You were tempted to have a conversation with the obviously important figure, but for some reason they're not a primary NPC. They only gave you a one-liner at every attempt to talk to them. You were rewarded with a small, a solid amount of confusion. I felt that as well. Dumpster diving. A frantic man asked for help finding their wedding band. He said you could have... It could have fallen off at any of four dumpsters. You found it, of course, in the last dumpster you checked. You were rewarded with the need to shower. Die hard. You helped someone clean up their shop, and they rewarded you with the ability to dye your equipment. Ending F, find them all. You were introduced to a collectible card game in a bar. You became so addicted to finding every card and beating every opponent that you fought, forgot your adventure entirely. You were rewarded with a brief ending cut credit scene and were returned to the point before you ever tried the game. Escort quest. A noble requested you accompany their grandfather to their home. They must have hated as you had to hold back many enemies to keep them moving, but successfully got them there. You returned to the noble and were rewarded but with a useless item that takes up inventory space. Experimental e dog research. An excited woman asks you to fight some machines after taking her experimental drug, which you have fought you had a hard while you fought you had a hard time seeing, but you felt stronger. She rewarded you with a potion. Fashion fashion world. You accidentally walked into a garden maze full of guards. You weren't sure if you'd get in trouble, so you snuck your way past all of them until you ended up on the other side. You were rewarded with a different view of the castle. Fence repair. You helped a villager fix villagers' fence to protect their children. You were rewarded with a fine egg. Find the hideout. You spend 10 minutes carefully following someone whose pace was faster than yours, walking sl but slower. Then you're walking but slower than your run, only to get caught and have to redo the whole mission. The second attempt, you managed to follow them without being spotted and found their secret hideout. You gave them the requested information to the person that asked, and rewarded with some absentee coins. First draft, you helped a novice cartographer fill in the blanks of their map of Exuvia. You were rewarded with the first draft, first property. Someone gave you a tutorial on how to buy a property and then gave you a seemingly low offer on a place. You took it only to realize it was obviously the first property in the game and probably not the best to buy. You were rewarded with a cobwebbed hut, fishing fanatic. You met a crazed man by Noble Lake going on and on about how all that matters here is the fishing. You were not sure if you disagreed with him. You were rewarded with contemplation. Fightless flightless tribe quest the flightless repeatable quest is to improve your reputation with the tribe you repeated it every day until you max out your reputation with them you were rewarded with the legendary piece of back equipment foreign primer you found a primer for a foreign language you decided to not even attempt to find the other 25 if it was this hard to find this one you were rewarded with a letter and dialogue free loot you found a house at the end of the road with a bunch of free loot in it. You were rewarded with being over encumbered. 
Frozen tree. You saw a treasure behind a locked doorway. You had to solve a mini game involving collecting key fragments in a slippery environment and were rewarded with some boots. Garden maze. You accidentally walked into a garden maze full of guards. <laughs> you weren't sure if you'd get in trouble, so you snuck your way all past all of them until you ended up on the other side. You were rewarded with a different view of the castle again. Generic fetch quest. An eventful fetch quest that wasn't worth writing down. Generic fetch quest 2. Yet another eventful fetch quest that wasn't worth writing down. Generic fetch quest 3. Yet another uneventful fetch quest that wasn't worth writing down. <laughs> Generic fetch quest 4. This is really getting out of hand. Another uneventful fetch quest. Generic fetch quest 5. You're starting to wonder if your journey is being written by someone as they're s and they're simply running out of ideas. <laughs> giant worms. You were attacked by a large number of giant worms. You were rewarded with not being digested in a worm's stomach. Heirloom trouble. Two siblings are fighting about who deserves their family heirloom. Both of their points are, of argument are valid, and both seem to be equally sleazy people. As they try to bribe you with different gear, you decide to roll some dice to make the decision, and you end up with a weird helmet and some XP. Highway robbery. You witness a traveler being robbed. You manage to catch a robber and return their goods. You are ordered with some coins. Hog invasion. Farm was under attack by a large number of feral hogs. You dispatched them in a few minutes and were rewarded with a strange sense of security. Hungry adventurer. You gave a starving adventurer some much needed food. Good thing you pick everything up. You were rewarded with a lighter load. Hunt tutorial monsters. One. A lady named tutorial woman asked you to get, take care of some slimes to prove you understood the controls. You did and were rewarded with some Aragonian coin. Hunt tutorial monsters too. Tutorial woman asks you to hunt five feral rats to prove you can jump. You're not sure how that proves you can jump, nor did you need to jump to take care of the job. She's still rewarded you with the red potion. <laughs> we must save my family. <laughs> tutorial monsters three. Oh, tutorial woman, a new request was to kill five chickens. You're not sure you could trust her because conventional wisdom dictates that if you strike down a chicken, a hundred more will rise in its defense. You decide to ignore the request or filled with determination. That's like a, that's an Undertale reference. That's a <laughs> Legend of Zelda reference. Uh, filled with determination as you get mauled by chickens. What are those chickens called? Chickabos or something? What are they called in, I can't remember, I don't know. Cuckoos, I think that was. Injured adventurer. You found an injured adventurer, nursed him back to health with a potion. You were rewarded with some XP. It's all the same. While getting your fix of skyarching coffee, you meet a, met a young gamer boy who wouldn't stop rambling about every game being an is isekai. In his frantic state, he asked you to find fine weapons to train with in case this was an isekai as well. You were rewarded with the feeling of uneasiness. Just more soup. You found a man asking for help finding clothing. You tried to help him understand he wouldn't find clothing at soup. You were rewarded with profanities. Leaf cleanup. You agreed to clean up all the leaves in Sky Arc Central Park. It was the worst minigame you were underwhelmingly rewarded with XP. Little bullies. A large population of rasky toads have been particularly bothersome to the citizens of Prefador. And slightly deranged looking man gave you a bottle of oil to spread a few different locations saying it would keep the toads away despite being unsure if the oil would do anything you decided to help him out and place the oil where he said to he gave you a half-eaten apple in return lionar you found a creature that was a terrifying mix of a lioness centaur that sounds terrifying despite appearances it turned out to be quite docile and everything and you went on your way docile Lockpick 99. You found a locked door that required a higher locking ability than you currently had. You respect and were able to open the door and find some uneventful loot and a weapon you can't use. Don't worry, you respect back right after. Lost Jewel. You were asked to find the Lost Jewel on your travel. It's a good thing the quest indicator exists or else you would have never been able to find such a small object in an open world. You were rewarded with a large amount of coins. Lost Toy. A child lost their toy while... Playing outside the Beastman's village, their parents requested you would find and return it. You found it where they said they left it, returned it, and were rewarded with seeing a joyful child. That's nice. 
Lost Woods, as you traveled in the forest, it filled with mist and your surroundings got more and more confusing. After a bit, you realized you were back to where you started. You kept attempting to go deeper into the forest, but couldn't solve the maze's puzzle until you found footprints. You followed the footprints through a small spring, where you found a majestic deer. You were rewarded with a song stuck in your head. Machine Tribe Quest. The machine's repeatable quest to improve your reputation with their tribe. You repeat it every day until you max it out with them. You were rewarded with the legendary instrument. Map dependency. You met a young traveler stuck at a crossroads. They realized their map was inaccurate and that they had no idea how to travel without one. When you told them directions to Prefador, they seemed even more lost, so you guided them there. You were rewarded with a bigger appreciation for technology. Messenger. Someone asks you to say something to another person about 30 feet away. When you talk to the other person, they ask you to say something else to the first person. This repeated eight times before they got all their information together. You were rewarded with drowsiness and a sprinkle of existential crisis. Mimic. You finally let your guard down, believing there wouldn't be any mimics in this world, only to run, run into your first one. It got the jump on you, and you barely managed to stay alive. You were rewarded with a perpetual fear of treasure. Excuse me. Monster crabs. Terrifying monster crabs attacked you on a beach beside the glass ocean. You managed to deal with them despite their thick shells. You were rewarded with some XP. Moral dilemma. You were challenged with quite the moral dilemma between three choices. Despite the impact your choice would make, you didn't think too hard about it since only one choice fits your build. Plus one good, plus one neutral, or plus one evil. More loot. You found an empty house full of loot. You were rewarded with the plunder. Mushroom gathering. You found a large grove of mushrooms that needed to be gathered. You were rewarded with a fine collection of mushrooms to cook with. Mysterious shrine. You found a mysterious shrine in front of an icy pond near the summit of Mount Ixe. You knew there had to be something special about it, but its mystery was unsolvable to you. You were rewarded with a lack of sleep and frustration. Ah, oh, no. Never trust glass. You saw a terrifying creature held back by a glass barrier. Naturally, the power went out and it broke through the glass. You managed to defeat the creature despite the horror in the moment. You were rewarded with a missile. Oh, <laughs> orc tribe quest. The orc's repeatable quest to improve your reputation with their tribe. You repeat it every day until you max out your reputation with them. You were rewarded with the legendary helmet. Parking mayhem. Pumpkin soup, pest, oh, pumpkin, what? Parking mayhem. You solved a pup parking puzzle minigame without looking up the answer. You're rewarded with bragging rights and XP. Pumpkin soup, a talking yeti asked you to bring him a fish, a pumpkin, and some goat cheese for his soup. You found the items, brought it to him, and were rewarded with a superb bowl of pumpkin soup. Pest control. You dealt with a basement full of rats as requested. You were rewarded with a small amount of coins and some XP. Research project. You helped do some research. That's it. You were rewarded with some newfound knowledge. Retired boss. You found a giant warrior with a, without a face clad in black armor resting on a hilltop. It told you some tales of its time as a boss fight, as a boss fight in the game. You were rewarded with for gratitude that you didn't have to face it. Ribbon. You found a shopkeeper that said they would create an accessory that would protect you from all ailments. The only catch is you had to find 99 dark crystals. You didn't even have a free accessory slot on your build, but you took the time to satisfy your hurting, hoarding urges. Urges. You were rewarded with one ribbon. River rafting grace. Oh, Riddler. You solved a man's riddle. You were rewarded with pride and XP. River rafting race. You were challenged to race down a river. You won, but only because your opponents all got stuck in shallow water. Shallow water. You were begrudgingly answered, awarded with prize money. Rock puzzle. There were four rocks in a pattern on the ground, and with one very obviously out of place, you had a strong feeling that you needed to put it back into place. You were rewarded with a cute jingle. Do -do -do -do. Rock skipping contest. You won a contest to see who could skip rocks the farthest. You were the only competitor. You were rewarded with satisfaction. <laughs> rowdy soldiers. Some rowdy soldiers were causing trouble in the North Fin, and you were put them back in their place and were rewarded with a good drink. Runaway balloon. A kid accidentally let go of his balloon. You can't climb buildings, so you brought him another one, and he didn't know any better. You were rewarded with some XP. Kids are dumb. Sand surfing. You were taught the ways of sand surfing and immediately took after took 
first prize in the sand surfing competition savage bear you survived the attack from savage bear you were rewarded with your life science fair you helped a kid win a science fair for some reason you got super into it and made a hovercraft you were rewarded with a medal scorpio tribe quest the Scorpio's repeatable quest to improve your reputation with the tribe. You repeat it every day until you max your reputation with them. You are rewarded with a legendary pair of boots and gloves. Sea salt ice cream. Somehow you were tricked into doing what felt like the same thing hundreds and uh, hundreds of times, and only to be rewarded with the most tragic goodbye you've ever witnessed. I'm, under, I'm confused by that. Side quest name. This isn't a bug. It's a feature. You were rewarded with some XP. Side mini game. Slide minigame. A fire elf, you came down a slide of lava. You have no idea how it possible how it is possible to be near lava in the first place, but you master you're a master of all things and took first prize. <sighs> okay. Small town woes. You met a starry eyed kid of living dreaming of living in a big city. You gave them some coins to kickstart their journey, though it doesn't make much sense. You were rewarded with some coin, okay. Snowball Bowling. A man living alone in the cabin at the top of the mountain asks you to play a game of supersized bowling with a giant snowball. You found a way to get a strike. You were rewarded with the best means of making money. Spider Hunt. You accidentally found yourself in a room full of spider people. Despite being sufficiently uncomfortable, you told them you'd help them out. So excited that somebody finally stayed long enough to listen to them. They entirely forgot to tell you what they wanted. However, they didn't forget to give you a weird heart-shaped object that you're not sure what to do with. That's, that's the Legend of Zelda. So I'm good. There's a bunch of Legend of Zelda stuff. You helped recover a shopkeeper's stolen goods. You were rewarded with 10% of all shop items. Sunstones. You were requested to light up sunstones in an area. A certain kind of monster feeds off the stones, so you had to take care of them. You were rewarded with some potions. Swift repair. You raced some engineers at the Sky Arch docks to see who would who could repair an engine the fastest. You got it this mini game down at this point. So it was a piece of cake. You were rewarded with XP and a medal. Taking flight. A particularly spirited girl asked you to help her in her journey to fly. She designed an attachment for her wings and just needed the parts to make it. You brought her the parts and were rewarded with the joy of seeing a dream realized. Talking Echidna. Strangely enough, you met a talking echidna obsessed with finding his emerald. It's Knuckles. You found it and were rewarded with a strange song. Target practice. You found a strange balloon shooting rage. Somehow the balloons defied all laws of physics to create quite the difficult task of shooting them. You were rewarded with the unique prizes and some unique prizes and coins. The Argonian reward. You went on a long quest that was probably better than the main quest itself. There was a huge battle for the quality in Argo Argania, Argania. And you helped settle the disputes between Vambris and Leodum. It didn't end perfect, but it was a step in the right direction. You were fought, rewarded with a fan club for the quest. Fear of death. You met a lovely talking robot that let, <coughs> led a small village of robots. For better or worse, you helped him convince some ancient robots to stay safe in the village. You were rewarded with some philosophy. The Golden Dagger. Someone told you they couldn't possibly live without the Golden Dagger they lost. You found it for them and returned it to them. Despite, despite knowing gold wouldn't defend them well, you were rewarded with some coins. Diagonally, a government worker asked you to find who was sending him hate mail for building a diagonal road and ruining this entire city's layout. Fence the sender to stop and were rewarded with some money. The map is a lie. You realize there was an area that you could walk through that wasn't on the map. You were rewarded with a couple potions and feeling, feeling of being a genius. The sleeping night. You found a wonderful end to stay the night. You were rewarded with some hard earned rest. It's important for us here at least once a month. The weird costume. You found a man dressed up as a raisin. He, of course, rewarded you with the strangest costume in the game for finding him. The Zodiac Spear Hunt. There were, you were told of an extremely powerful spear to rival all other weapons. You were eventually found the spear's supposed location, only to find a note in the place of the chest. You were rewarded with nothing but defeat and the note that said there's only 1.1 1 .1 chance of the spear existing in this location. That sucks. Thug Trouble. You stopped some thugs trying to rob a store. You were rewarded with some XP. Thug Trouble 2. 
You stopped an armed robbery of a bank. You were rewarded with some XP and the gratitude of the victims inside the bank. Thug Trouble 3. You stopped an excessively large amount of thugs trying to mug a person. It didn't really make sense why there would be so many people attempting to steal from one poor soul, but you were rewarded with the, some contentment for being able to help them. Tight Rope Walk. You found a minigame of balancing on a rope between two trees. You were rewarded with the passage into Vampirus. Time trail. You were challenged to top the record for the fastest time driving down the East Highway. You broke the record easily. You're not sure, even sure how the previous record was so slow because all you did was drive in a straight line with the pedal to the floor. You were rewarded with the prize money and some XP. The tired mailman. A mailman in a bright red suit was catching his breath on the side of the road. He told you he feels like he, this is my dude, feels like he's been running the same path on the same day that keeps resetting. You offered to take his mail the rest of the way, but didn't know how else to help him. You were rewarded with the fear that maybe you've been here before as well. Torn. Two people gave very compelling arguments about who deserved the last cookie. I'm almost there for the side quest anyways. For some reason, you spent an hour mewling over the decision only to find out there was a second cookie all along. You weren't rewarded with the cookie, which sucks, but you did get some XP. Tao Minstrel. Tao Minstrel was playing in an inn. They were rather talented, so you made it a point to give them some coins. You were rewarded with the satisfaction of paying an artist. Trading quest. You went on a peculiar journey, trading one strange item for another strange item again and again until you were eventually rewarded with magic armor that lost its power. Treasure trove. You found a small opening in a mountain full of treasure. I'm sure the person that left us here wouldn't mind if you took that, right? Trespassing. You walked into an empty mansion with what looked like a bunch of important pathways. You spent hours trying to find what was important about this mansion only to give up. You were rewarded with nothing. Troll cave. You found a cave full of trolls and loot. You managed to survive the trolls and acquire that loot. Trolls. You survived an attack from vigorously regenerating troll. You were rewarded with some hides and XP. Water leak. No one would fix a water leak in an apartment complex, so you did it. You were rewarded with XP. Waterfall den. Every game needs a scenic dive, preferably with the waterfall. Werewolf den. You ran into a den of werewolves. They were shockingly laid back and obviously no threat. You were rewarded with some good times. Hmm. You are over encumbered. A view of the sky arched docks from the top of the largest crane. All right, look out points. All right, look out points. Best views of Exuvia, given a better perspective of your surroundings. Absenti Shrine, an incredible view at the peak of Ascenti. Apartment rooftop, a view from the top of the largest sky arch apartment complex, Bell Tower, a view of the whole town from Prefador from the on top of the Bell Tower, Clout Industries Tower, a terrifying view from the top of the largest building of sky arch, giant robotic dinosaur, the, the mind reels of what this uh, creature was capable of, the climb is insanely dangerous but the view is incredible, hilltop peak, a view of the three regions on the top of a hill in Argo Argonia, Argonia. Yeah, I don't know how to say that. Hospital rooftop, a view on the top of the Sky Arch Hospital. Leodum Tower, a view on top of the Leodum Watchtower. Mount Despy Peak, a beautiful view at the peak of Mount Despy. Mount S.A. Peak, a beautiful view at the peak of Mount S.A. The Great Tree, the best view of Vambrus Forest atop the Great Tree. Top of a crane, a view of the Sky Arch docks from the top of the largest crane. All right, that went quicker at least. And the best part of an any epic adventure, 15 pound fish. If you have a faint recollection of someone saying that they give you a golden scale and reward for a fish, but you can't recall whom. Magic art. A fish found only in a lake. This is somehow the most generic fish you can imagine. Admintite fish. A large fish that looks like a rock made out of admintite. It's too heavy to swim, so it disguises itself to trap the smaller fishes that eat on the ocean floor. Alpha fish, the bettest fish, largest sibling. Anchovy, somehow this extremely tiny fish got caught on your hook. Angler fish, nasty looking fish with large teeth and a huge underbite. Barracuda, large sleek fish with a nasty bite. Big boy bass, a species of bass fish that are unusually large. Blue fish, you have a feeling there's a red one. Blue herring, this is important. 
catfish, a fish but with whiskers, cod, large speckled fish in the glass ocean, crab, delicious with rice, seaweed, and avocado, eel, a large eel, fairy fish, bright pink and purple fish found in the ivory lake, glass tuna, a most common of the glass ocean, very reflective, golden fish, a golden fish, it has a very strong swim from all its weight it has to carry, it would sell, probably sell for a good price in the market, jub jub, the king of fish lives at the bottom of the ocean. Legend says that its bowels lay a vast dungeon containing hordes of loot. No one actually wants to go trudging around in gargantuan fist guts, so it's all. I think that's from uh, Legend of Zelda as well. Koi fish. For some reason, you thought fishing in someone's decorative pond was a good idea. You had second thoughts after catching this fish, however, and put it back. Mackerel. Somehow, after catching one, you have three mackerels perfectly grilled and served over rice. Magic carp. It really is just a magic carp. <laughs> Oil fish, a species of fish that have adapted to the accursed oasis. Pike, not a weapon. Platinum fish, a shining fish made out of platinum. It's better than golden fish. Pond guardian, a long fish found in the pond in Central Sky Arch. The fishermen around you were shocked when you caught it, it's, as this location was only known in a rare book. Rave, the demon king. Demon Fish King himself, he was very upset that he had finally been caught. Rainbow Trout, very easy to spot by the long rainbow trail that follows them as they swim. Redfish, you have a feeling there's a blue one. Salmon, best smoked and served on a bagel. Sandfish, there had to be a fish swimming in the sand. Sea Urchin, a any delicacy on the inside, poison monster, poisonous monster on the outside. Shellfish, a fish that adapted to the lake of fire with hardened scales. Squid, served best with battered and fried. Swamp monster, though the name is ominous, swamp monsters are no, just are just as harmless as any other common fish. Their fins look like they're like large mouths with sharp teeth to scare away predators. Swordfin, a fresh water dwelling fish with a dangerous fin. Swordfish, you look only look so cool if only you could catch two of them. Telescope fish, small fish with strange eyes that are said to be able to see to the bottom of the ocean. The great guppy, like the tiny fish, but big. Glass light. A blinding glow is the last thing said to be seen before this monster of an angler fish catches its prey. Even while it's not hunting, the great light keeps the ocean, glass ocean lit. That sounds terrifying. The Lake King, not to be confused with the River King, who's just a legend and not a real fish at all. Tilapia, fried up in some spices and you've got a tasty meal. Trash, not a fish, but gotta clean where you can. Clean up where you can, right? Relationships, oh my god, here we go. The most memorable moments with your closest companions. Levy the Leviathan, kept talking about the glory days when his summoner called for his help every day. Levy seemed obsessed with peace because that's what my summoner would want. He very carefully suggested that maybe he should lighten up on his controlling ways because the summoner probably won't want that either. Your relationship with Levy grew stronger. Bahamut II, as you explore the peak of Mount Despy, you realize that the peak was not a mountaintop but a large moping dragon. Bahamut II dejectedly Introduced himself as the only Bahamut to not be included. They wanted to try something different. You managed to cheer him up a bit by telling him that you think of at least 13 other Bahamuts after him, so they probably regretted the decision. Your relationship with Bahamut II grew stronger. Sully won. Oh gosh. You found Sully waiting outside Pin Tower, and she asked you to help her deal with the gang causing trouble in the area on your way into their hideout. She told you of her time as the owner of Pin Industries and how she felt left after being disillusioned by the selfishness in the industry. You found the hideout, dealt with the gang, and your relationship with Sully grew stronger. Sully, too. You accompany Sully in investigating research being done by the Penn Industries Research Facility. You discovered they've been quietly doing experiments on imbuing children with magic for decades. And Sully was one of the children that they had experimented on. You destroyed their research and the, had the guilty parties arrested. You did your best to comfort Sully, but she asked that you give her time to process what she had found out. Your relationship with Sully grew stronger. Sully 3, you and Sully spent time in the Sky Arc, which 
Art Museum. She expressed her gratitude for your help in making Sky Arch a better place, and you made a big decision on what your feelings toward her were. Your relationship with Sally grew stronger. Don Bombi, the happiest and probably only content person you've met in Exuvia, he invited you in for a merry meal made by his river spirit of a wife and sang many a song. You feel refreshed and full of hope after parting ways. Your relationship with Don Bambi grew stronger. Dream. You found it, the perfect spot for the perfect date. You brought a dinner and arrived to see them waiting for you for the beautiful sunset. You ate together, laughed together, and confided your deepest secrets. As the sun fell below the horizon, you wake up in a panic and remember that that character wasn't a romance option. Ellen the Raven, a seemingly old woman, seemingly because she's wearing a raggedy bird outfit that coats every inch of her. She keeps going on about hunters and hunting, but they're... There's no one else here or anything around to hunt for, though perhaps the greatest hunt is the one for love. Your relationship with Ellen grew stronger. Anel won. You found Anel brooding in his abode at the Lake of Fire. After you bothered him enough, he told you of his fear of never moving forward. He wanted to expand his drollery work outside of the Lake of Fire. The rest of Exuvia is untrusting of fire elves and only buys jewelry sold directly from the crafting guild, which would only accept him if he pro he had proof of sales outside of the Lake of Fire. You listened attentively, and when the time was right, you told him you supported him in his efforts. Your relationship with the Nell grew stronger. Nell too. You and Nell and Sally may met at a mall to help Nell research the most successfully jewel successful jewelry on the market. One of Nell's biggest influences happened to be there but he couldn't bring himself to talk to them. You and Sally managed to convince Nell that he is a person worth talking to, and he mustered the courage to approach them. He came back from the conversation full of energy and motivation. Your relationship with Nell grew stronger. Nell 3, you traveled with Nell to Sky Arch to help him sell his jewelry at a show. During your travels, he told you that he wasn't used to having support. He never knew his parents and was never great at being a close friend. You arrived at the show and kept Nell's shop so customers wouldn't avoid a fire elf shot. And Nell's jewelry was a huge hit, and he expressed his gratitude for you on the way back to the Lake of Fire. You made a big decision on what your feelings towards him were. You and your relationship with the Nell grew stronger. Fairy Queen, you met the surprisingly overbearing Fairy Queen at the Lake Ivory Lake. She showered you with gifts and begged you to visit more often. Your relationship with the Fairy Queen grew stronger. Ferdinand. You met Ferdinand and spent some time together talking. It was a short-lived conversation, in fact. It wasn't much of a conversation at all. Ferdinand just kept talking about himself. He is obviously the worst romance option. Your relationship with Ferdinand grew stronger nonetheless. Pat them in. You found them, them in a spirited conversation with the Orcs tribe leader. You caught up with him, caught up with after with him after and he apologized for his anger he told you he's been trying to bring the tribes of the waste together but no one will list is willing to listen living in the infinite waste is difficult enough he wishes the tribes would work together to make a better place you told him you keep his cause and your relationship with him with them grew stronger them too them asked you for help in convincing the beastman's tribe to give gifts to the other tribes as a peace offering. You came with him and your trust in Tham was enough to convince the tribe leader that Tham's cause was a good one. Confused as to why he wouldn't be known by the his own tribe own tribe's leader, you asked him why he needed your help. He told you that his family was exiled from the tribe before he was born, so he hasn't been a part of the tribe until recently. It's been an uphill climb for him to be accepted in any way. Your relationship with Tham grew stronger. Dam 3. Dam brought you to what was left of his home in the waste growing up. He told you how the sandstorms of the waste can last for weeks. And f living outside of a tribe led to his parents passing away at an early age. He told you of his dream to build the first city of the infinite waste to make it, living here a better place. He expressed his gratitude for your help in the journey. He made a big decision on what your feelings were towards him more and your relationship with them grew stronger. Uh, the blacksmith, I know the blacksmith's apprentice. Oh, I gotta do Haroth. Haroth, you asked Haroth just outside Absenti deep in thought. He not noticed you and greeted you warmly. You asked him what he was thinking about and he told you that he was pondering about what could, 
What could possibly give his friends hope again? The town of Absinthe had always been a place of cynicism and escapism, but his travels across Exuvia showed him that there was still hope in this world. He knew how deeply rooted the hurt was in Absinthe, so he knew just telling his friends wouldn't do anything. So you told him that you knew he would find a way to help them. Your relationship with Hroth grew stronger. Hroth too. You and Roth met at a bar in Absenti, and just as you sat down, a man stormed into the bar. His home was under attack just outside Absenti, and he needed help. You and Roth rushed to help the man, and he guided you away from the city to a spot near a cave and didn't seem to be anyone's home. You realized too late that this was a trap and were ambushed. But just before you were overwhelmed, one of the attackers held the attack. Hroth recognized him as one of his friends. Despite him saving your lives, Hroth was deeply disappointing. After scalding the friend and his accomplice, you went back to town. As you traveled, Hroth confined that he struggled every day to keep his hopeful perspective. This certainly didn't help. You told him that it would probably always be a struggle, but that he wasn't alone. Your relationship with Hroth grew stronger. Hroth 3. Lord. Hroth brought you to his favorite view of Eskia, Eskia in between the peaks of Mount Saa, and you spent time enjoying the view and conversing. Excuse me. He told you how he realized that he never would have found this place if it wasn't for Gesh, and that it was incredible that Gesh's evil could cause such a good change of heart for himself. You continued to share the moment together. You made a big decision on what your feelings towards him were. Your relationship with Roth grew stronger. The blacksmith. You met the master blacksmith of Leodom and traveled together to purchase a rare metal from the elves of Vampris for a commission of hers. During your travel, you discussed her hatred for the hatred in Air. <coughs> excuse me, for the hatred in <coughs> Aragania and learned that she grew up and trained in Vampris. Your relationship with the blacksmith grew stronger. The master fisher, you met the old lone fisherman sitting by the oasis in the infinite waste. He told you, told you some stories of his life and how he now finds peace in taking life slow. You caught many fish and your relationship with the master fisher grew stronger. The prince, you have a faint recollection of someone saying they give you a golden scale and reward for the fish, but you can't recall whom. Mr. Prince, Ryue won. You recognized Ryue's voice in the perforator and realized it was in fact her. She was disguised in helping feed some children. You discreetly told her, discreetly showed you recognized her and she told you to follow her. She led you to another room, closed the door and uncovered her face to talk to you. She told you she'd been bringing food to the hungry and perforator and using this disguise to get past Leodim's guards. She told you of her frustration with the people, her people in Vambris for refusing to send more help because of their prejudice against humans. And she knows she doesn't have the power to cause change in Leodom. After talking a bit longer, you helped her bring food to more of the Prefeter villages and your relationship with Ryue grew stronger. Ryue too, you found an ecstatic Ryue finishing up conversation with the elves in Vambris. She had just convinced them to help her bring more food to the people of Prefador, something she had been trying to do for months. You joined her for a celebratory drink, and she confided in you for her dream to free Prefador from Leodum rule. She knew it was going to be difficult, maybe impossible, but she was passionate about giving, being the key to bringing peace to Aragonia. You shared in her excitement and told her that even if her dream felt impossible, she couldn't give up on it. Your relationship with Ryue grew stronger, yet again. Ryue 3. You accompany Ryue as an emissary of Vambris to speak with the Perfeter town court. Ryue begged them to accept help. Because of their people were starving and they weren't going to get support from Leodum. Despite her best efforts, they refused to listen because their connection to Leodum was too deep. She left ask exasperated and you joined her. She expressed her despair at not being able to change, bring any change in Exuvia. She knew that people needed to make the best of what they can't had, even if it if this isn't the world where they were from. You listened and comforted her by telling her that change was always going to feel impossible, but she had already brought about change. 
You made a big decision on what your feelings towards her were, and your relationship with Ryue grew stronger. Varice won. You found Varice aggressively writing, and despite you attempting not to disrupt her, she invited you in for tea. She told you how she thinks that Suvia will always be trapped in a state of frustration and dissatisfaction without history of its own. So that's what she's been writing down, the history of Exuvia. You listened and shared in her excitement. Your relationship with Varese grew stronger. I think I'm having an asthma attack. I've been reading. <sighs> you found Varese late at night in a in an and visibly upset. You she agreed to have to having your company and you she told you about how her historical research weighs heavy on her. She learned about so much evil, and she didn't feel that she was any better than the evil she saw. You listened and did your best to comfort her where you could. Your relationship with Varese grew stronger. Varese 3. You met Varese at the outskirts of the Elven City and ventured deeper into Vambris to look for an ancient artifact. As you traveled, you discussed her fear of her work going unfinished with the combination of her growing age and the danger of her travel. She wasn't sure it could be finished. You arrived at the shrine she was looking for and you held back the ancient spiders as she wrote down her research on the artifact that lay on top of the shrine. As you safely escaped, she excitedly told you that she thinks the artifact might be one of the keys to understanding why people are brought to this world. As you traveled back, uh, Isakai, you reminded her that she didn't have to finish her work for it to make a difference. She thanked you for your constant support. You made a big decision on what your feelings towards her were. Your relationship with Varese grew stronger. Beacons. Balance Beacon. You solved a puzzle involving weights and a large scale. The beacon's energy was restored. Box Beacon. You solved a puzzle involving pushing boxes to the correct location and combined space. The beacon's energy was restored. Cannon Beacon. Play the monotonous task of aiming a cannon at the just right angle to hit a target. The beacon's energy was restored. City Beacon. You solved a puzzle involving switches and lights. The beacon's energy was restored. Climbing Beacon. You solved a beacon involving picking the correct pass to climb. The beacon's energy was restored. Command Beacon. You solved a puzzle involving a staff that controls statues. The beacon's energy was restored. Deep Forest Beacon. You solved a puzzle involving flipping rooms with hidden doorways. The beacon's energy was restored. Desert Beacon. You solved a puzzle involving magnets. The beacon's energy was restored. Dragon Shrine Beacon. You solved a puzzle involving hidden symbols in the past where the beacon's energy was restored. Electric Beacon. You solved a puzzle involving wires and electrical currents. The beacon's energy was restored. Fairy Beacon. You found all the fairies playing hide and go seek. They opened the path to a switch that restored the beacon's energy. Fire beacon, you solved a puzzle involving a multitude of torches. The beacon's energy was restored. The ice beacon, you solved a puzzle involving sliding objects on ice. The beacon's energy was restored. <laughs> maze beacon, you navigated a maze to reach a switch that restored the beacon's energy. Mirror beacon, you solved a puzzle involving mirrors and light. The beacon's energy was restored. <laughs> Oasis beacon, you solved a puzzle involving fake switches and one real one. The beacon's energy was restored yet again. Ocean beacon, you solved a puzzle involving confusion, keys, and a lot of water. The beacon's energy was restored. Sand beacon, you solved a puzzle involving sand timers and the beacon's energy was restored. Sandstorm beacon, you navigated a mysterious sandstorm to reach a switch that restored the beacon's energy. Spirit Beacon, you solved a puzzle involving pictures and spirits. The beacon's energy was restored. Stealth Beacon, you snuck through a maze with mechanical floating hands to reach a switch that restored the beacon's energy. Spider Beacon, you solved a spooky puzzle involving clearing spider webs. The beacon's energy was restored. Excuse me. Target Beacon, you shot a number of lar large number of mo fast moving targets with a bow and arrow, opened a path to a switch that restored the beacon's energy. Swap Beacon, you never navigated a maze of small bridges above poisonous water to reach a switch that restored the beacon's energy. The Waterway Beacon, you solved a puzzle that involved directing water, the beacon's energy was restored. Wind Beacon, you solved a puzzle that involved directing wind, the beacon's energy was restored. Legendary Weapons, oh god. Avalyn, reforged from bloodstones collected in Eskaya. Named after a bizarre crossbow capable of shooting multiple times without the need to reload, the Avalyn is a spiritual successor in the form of a six by six side by side barrel shotgun. Quite unwieldy. Sounds awful. Cover art weapon two. Reforged from the in game rewards you've collected in Millennium Caves. Just like the weapon on the cover art that you started the game with, with which in this case is a compass. So good look with that. Plus 10 fashion. 
The Gugnir, reforged from the slime runes you collected in Aragonia, takes the shape of a grand but rather gooey spear. Cannot be broken, but probably can't break anything either. Isakai Tania. Isakai Tana. Reforged from the tropes you collected in Sky Arch. Conjured the true power of being summoned into another world through a katana worthy of a summoned protagonist. The metal slab. A large metal slab sharpened into a one-sided sword. Reforged from the magic orbs you collected in the Infinite West. There's no reason you should be able to hold this weapon, let alone swing it. But somehow you make, can make a flurry of up to 15 slashes in one moment. Stick, you collected five important looking glowing shards in each region and brought them to Master Smith of the Lake of Fire. Excitedly, they ran into the back of their shop with the crystals and returned with the stick. Fortress, this is. The strongholds of you. Oh, fuck. Bandit, <laughs> Bandit Fortress 1. You conquered a hideout. Bandits were hoarding weapons and simple jewelry. Acquired a small amount of loot. Bandit Fortress 2. You conquered a hideout. Bandits hoarding silver and gems. Acquired a significant amount of loot. Bandit Fortress 3. You conquered a hideout. Bandits hoarding gold and diamonds and acquired a gigantic amount of loot. Dark Magician Fortress 1. You conquered a fortress full of dark magicians wearing brown robes and acquired a small amount of loot. Dark Magician Fortress 2, you conquered a fortress full of dark magicians wearing silver embroidered root and acquired a significant amount of loot. Dark Magician Fortress 3, you conquered a fortress, fortress full of dark magician wearing deep blue embroidered robe and acquired a gigantic amount of loot. Goblin Fortress 1, you conquered a fortress full of goblins clad in bronze umber and acquired a, acquired a small amount of loot. Goblin Fortress 2, you conquered a... Fortress full of goblins and clad in silver armor and acquired a significant amount of loot. Goblin Fortress 3, you conquered a fortress full of goblins clad in gold armor and acquired a gigantic amount of loot. Orc Fortress 1, you conquered an orc fortress of black tattooed warriors and acquired a small amount of loot. Orc Fortress 2, you conquered an orc fortress of white tattooed warriors and acquired a significant amount of loot. Orc Fortress 3, you conquered a con orc fortress full of red tattooed warriors and acquired a gigantic amount of loot. Skeleton Fortress 1, you conquered a fortress full of skeletons adorned in bronze and tatter and acquired a small amount of loot. Skeleton Fortress 2, you conquered a fortress full of skeletons adorned in silver attire and acquired a significant amount of loot. Skeleton Fortress 3, you conquered a fortress full of skeletons adorned in golden attire and acquired a gigantic amount of loot. Templar Fortress 1, you conquered a forest fortress full of Templars wearing bronze armor and acquired a small amount of loot. Templar Fortress 2, you conquered a fortress of Templars wearing steel armor and acquired a significant amount of loot. Templar's Fortress 2. <laughs> you conquered a fortress of Templars wearing black and red painted armor and acquired a gigantic amount of loot. Three things left. The mask. Ancient hero mask. A thin blue mask that covers your eyes and gives you the identity of an ancient hero. Bayer mask. As you sing ferociously in high tune, high notes, stilling fear in surrounding enemies and inspiring allies. Bunny mask. More of a hat than a mask, and it doesn't cover your face at all, it gives you, but it gives you bunny ears. Uh, oddly enough, you can run faster while wearing it, but you can no longer jump. Camouflage mask. Clear your mask that lets you blend into any environment if you don't move for a very long time. Chicken mask. A strange chicken mask given to you by a guy named Richard. Columbina mask. A typical mask for a masquerade. Dragon Priest Mask. Mask of a self proclaimed Dragon Priest that attacked you. It hums with an unfamiliar energy. Fierce Cricket Mask. When worn, you are able to make fierce cricket noises. Frozen Mask. A mask inside a thick sheet of ice. You haven't been able to melt the ice, so you're not sure what it would do if you put it on. Giant Mask. It's too large to wear. Jaguar Mask. When worn, it gives you an extreme urge to suplex someone. Jester mask, a colorful but unsettling mask. It gives you the urge to let out maniacal laughter when worn. Mask of ferocity, a man with a creepy smile lent you this mask. You tried it on and couldn't tell if you were going crazy or hearing the thoughts of a dog. You didn't like that, so you took it off and kept it in your inventory. <sighs> Galical skeleton mask, the mask that conceals your identity unless you see farther from a farther distance. Moon and Sun Mask. Oh god. 
A ceremonial mask used in Leo Dome when a couple gets married. This had to be the most obnoxious mask for you to obtain. You honestly can't even keep track of the weird places you had to be at just the right time. Or the amount of different people you had to talk to. The only bright side was keeping a couple was seeing a couple having a romantic moment and then get married. They gave you this mask in return for all your help getting them together. Moon face mask. A mask that looks like the moon with big white eyes and eccentric smile gives you the form of a magical and ancient weapon when worn. Plague doctor mask. A mask of a raven with a large beak protects you from sickness when worn. Queen's mask. A still mask that covers the upper half of your face. You're all around the best character when you wear this. Rock mask. You can finally live out your fantasy to be a rock when you wear this mask. Skull mask. This mask makes you very sad, so you don't like to put it on. That's probably a Legend of Zelda reference. Space Helmet. It's not a mask, but it sure is cool. Spider Mask. Seems to do nothing but scare other people when you have it on when worn. Tiki Mask. You don't wear this mask, it talks to you. Tree Spirit Mask. The large leaf turned into a mask when worn helps you find the mischievous tree spirits. Feathers. The most unnecessary collectibles in Exuvia. Oh my god, okay. Alleyway feather. Found in a small alleyway. Apartment rooftop feather. Found on top of a big apartment building. Flag pack feather. Found on a backpack with a rec audio recording featuring random facts. Bobblehead feather. Found on top of a bobblehead that lets you raise any of your stats permanently. If you only you had stats to raise. Bush feather. Found it between some bushes. Cabin feather. Found behind a cabin. You suddenly feel very claustrophobic and start singing a song. Car feather. This is usually a hard feather to acquire most of the time, but you found the car it was attached to stuck at the stoplight. Cavern feather. Found in a small cavern in Lindlum. Cliffside feather. It was a difficult climb, but you managed to find it on the side of the cliff. Crystalline feather. Quite the sharp feather. Desert feather. Found deep in the infinite waste. Dusty feather. Feather covered in dust found on top of a small plateau. Easy feather. Found in plain sight in the middle of the road. Feather in a jar. It seems someone was doing experiments on this feather. Forest feather, found deep within Vambrous Forest. Grass feather, found cleverly hidden in some grass. Happy pendant, a feather on a necklace. Metal feather, a hardcore feather. Mountain peak feather. In a very gamey way, you were rewarded with this feather for reaching the highest point in the game. Ocean feather, found in the middle of the Magnus Ocean. Papyrus feather, a drawing of a feather on papyrus. Close enough. Phoenix feather, spelled wrong you get the feeling that this feather will revive you but you're not willing to test it out not spelled like that i won't red feather picking this up makes you learn beak bomb and town torpedo however you only have up to four moves at a time stop trying to learn beak bomb and town torpedo you stop trying to learn god beak bomb and town torpedo rock feather can't explain why but you're reminded of the fact that you can jump Shiny feather has a comforting glow. Shopping cart feather found on top of a street light. Sketchy salesman feather found in a sketchy salesman's shop. Street light feather found on top of a street light. Templar flag far from Rome. It's not a feather, but something about it feels similar to a feather. Tunnel feather found in the tunnels of Lindlum. Tower feather found on top of one of the four towers of the Leo Dome walls. Warehouse feather, it was hiding behind some boxes in a warehouse. One thing left, the herp tiles, the herp derper tiles. Please don't be long description, please God. You research on the reptiles and amphibians of Exuvia. Ezrorius, ruler of the frogs, approximately the size of a full grown lion, covered in bright blue spots in, over his black, ink black skin. Bird hunters, adapted to the modern structure of the sky arch. These snakes can nearly fly. This makes them master hunters of birds unlucky enough to land on their rooftops. Blue night geckos, electric blue gecko found in Bamber's forest. They can store up energy and let out an electronic discharge to scare off predators. The best. Diamar, monster of a crocodile with skin as hard as a turtle shell. Some say they have seen them breathe fire, but don't let that deter you from trusting him. He has given up on his past evil ways. What is he, Bowser? Uh, fire drakes. Fire breathing drakes of the, the Chimera mountain range. As terrifying as their fire might seem, they only use it to show off. You get the feeling there's got to be other elemental drakes. Gar. 
Supposed myth and an icon of the people of Skyarch due to its ability to perfectly blend into any environment. A large gliding chameleon that blends into rooftops of Skyarch when standing still. That's terrifying. Golden dust geckos. Small bright green gecko covered in golden spots thought to bring good luck. The people of Absenti often keep them as pets. Golden frog. Small gold dangerous. Thank God. Ice straight. Their breath is so cold they can shatter a rock by freezing any moisture inside of it. It is thought that there is an even larger population deeper in the caves where people had not carved out a path. You get the feeling there's got to be other elemental traits. Rasky toads. Very bumpy, grumpy species of toads. Oddly territorial, rasky are known to chase other creatures away by repetitively hitting them with their tongues. Leopard geckos. Probably the only good thing about the infinite waste is running into one of these. Medium-sized gecko, which spotted in bumpy skin that blends well, very well in the desert. Lightning drakes. Lightning drakes can be found bolting through the sands of the infinite waste. While very few people have actually seen any, many of the, have seen their trails of lightning left behind from their speed. Get the odd feeling there's other elemental drakes. Lover cobras. <sighs> the species of cobras are actually quite friendly. Their necks can flatten into a shape similar to a heart. Mamba, mama mamba. There's no wilder than a grape. Though no wider than a great, no one has been seen the end of this mamba. She roams the infinite ways, taking care of all her children. Too busy to be a threat to people. <laughs> Mid. A large serpent thought to be a myth. People say they've seen it moving through the mist as if swimming. You saw it playing and gnawing on its tail, of all things. Mirror snakes. Masters of stealth, their skin reflects in a way that the movement looks like light shimmering in the ocean. Only creature in the glass ocean that are able to avoid Levy's eyes. They swim near the surface of the ocean during the day, looking for fish unlucky enough to swim near them. Nid. A large, ominous looking dragon was most likely the antagonist of another story. Phantom geckos. Gecko demons not only can they fly but they take pleasure in pestering people with their large tails luckily the only other power they have as demon is blending in with leaves sally a medium-sized salamander covered in black with a bright few bright yellow spots on her back the friendliest of them all shield pythons species of pythons that have adapted to their large lack of fangs and venom by using their adamantite skulls and lightning quick speed to their kill their prey. Much smarter than most snakes, some of the beastmen of the infinite waste have trained the snakes to protect them in combat. Tia. The smallest dragon you've ever seen, and it even has five heads, and is known as Tia in Sky Art. She can be seen running around the city pestering people with her most powerful weapon, cuteness. <laughs> Titanus, queen of the snakes, a boa nearly 15 meters long. She reigns in the swamps of northern Bambrus, keeping the population of alligators at bay. That should be all the achievements. We just read all these things. Let's check it real quick. Oh, that was a lot. I'm going the wrong way because the scrolling thing doesn't work that way. Whatever, Chivos. All right, impossible odds, conquer it. Oh wait, let me go to the top. Read the achievements after I've read everything else. Anticlimactic, 100% completion plus 1%. Triple digits collect everything. Environment skipper. Visit every fast travel location. No more distractions. Finish the main quest. Priorities complete every side quest. Quintessential. View every lookout point. The true experience. Catch every fish. Perfect relationship. Say the perfect words in every relationship. What a view. Light every beacon. Legendary. Reforge every legendary weapon, especially the stick. Impossible odds. Conquer every fortress. Jump quest master, collect every feather. Mask collector, collect every mask. The best animals, catch every herp tile. Read every journal entry. Reach level 100. Finish the generalist skill tree. Finish the speedrunner skill tree. Finish the completionist skill tree. Unlock every skill. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll include timestamps to the part where I'm reading forever, and I'll include, well, the start of the video is going to be where I'm playing through it. But I do appreciate you guys watching. As always, if you would, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye! Ooh, that was a lot of reading. My voice is going to be gone for days.